Hello. Been a while since I've said hello to people at home. And the last time I showed you this little town called Tromso, Tromsa, whatever you want to call it. It was snowing here. But finally, towards the end of May, spring is here. Um, the snow has cleared from the roads and the sun is shining and the impeccable care they take of the roads here it's amazing after all that they did for clearing the snow and uh, ensuring that you know we could walk and slide freely some of which you saw they have now cleaned up their streets with hose pipes and you know whatever mud and stone had gathered they've just cleaned the whole place up and it's really really nice to take walks uh, i'm on my way to work and i thought why not uh, help you all catch a glimpse while the sun lasts because this can be a pretty snowy uh, no sorry rainy place as well and who knows when it starts raining again okay let me cross let me cross let me cross um so i have not been making videos mostly because i have been super duper busy with exams um what kind of exams you may ask of course i'm not a student of religious studies which means i have to be inducted into the field so these are exams just for theories methods so on and so forth um i will tell you more about the exams if i pass in them i will tell you what the exams were about what was the question how did i tackle the question but at this point i don't really think i will pass these exams they were take home exams about 4000 word essays uh academic articles on the stated subject and i have a big doubt about how i fared in them so there's no point me telling you what the exam was and what i wrote because at this point it's fruitless so i thought why not show you the sunny climes of this place instead which you have seen mostly during snowy days and it's really really beautiful here this is uh, the town the town center i think i'm recording in um oh, damn it vertical again so not the most ideal way to record but i hope you got an idea of how things are rolling here it's really nice to catch a glimpse of the church and the bridge and all of that but i'm not going that way so this is the way i'm taking So as you can see, there are people on the roads that are that are without any masks or nothing here. Mostly because I think they have been able to control the situation here quite well. Not too many people, so can't be that tough. No, no, it was tough. We went through about ten weeks of full lockdown, which means working from home. It's quite isolating because this is already an isolating place. But because it doesn't have too many people we could walk around as you could see meet friends not in a big in big groups you couldn't meet more than 5 people at a time so chika se it wasn't that bad as it has been everywhere else it was very very i mean the whole time one of the things that i kept up with was watching news on ndtv ravish kumar's prime time and that's something i try to watch every day to get a sense of what's going on in india 
and it was distressing every time he did and every day he was covering about migrant labor and every morning when i watched the prime time from the from the night before i thought this dude will give up he has to stop at some point he has to stop at some point talking about migrant labor maybe ndtv will be like hey who's watching this why are you covering this every single day but he's relentless he's relentless in his pursuit for information that's just not going to be there anywhere else and he's absolutely right except other platforms like the wire who did lots of interviews lots of different kinds of ways to look at the news and there were a host of akash banerji and uh, dhruv rathi and all who were also doing manisha was doing a great job of uh, of news laundry she did a great job of reviewing what the others were doing so it gave a pretty broad base image of what was going on in terms of news in india but of course i'm not just looking at news itself as a discourse but also what are they speaking about and if ravish kumar isn't impressive in any case he just went on and on relentlessly not just one show then he began this ki baat to go deeper in these stories of the migrants what they're eating how they're staying how are they being given the food that they're being given i'll show you the church Don't share it. I don't know if you can see it. I can't see it on my screen. So it's tough for me to say. It's too bright here. Have I told you that I moved offices? Well, I'm still located at the same spot, more or less. I mean, same building, but on a different spot altogether. these stupid mistakes i make but do you want to see what it looks like now that spring and sun is here the university campus so this is the peace center those are the technology buildings and the hospital so i should have shown this way peace center peace center there's the faculty for humanities and social sciences that's the planetariat up there and somewhere there is my department archaeology history religious studies and i can take a completely different entrance now that i don't have to enter that way do you remember i used to enter that way but now i take this other side where our archaeology department is located mm-hmm. of course this road was untakeable before because it was packed with snow you can see some of the snow still is melting but i know i've seen little tufts of ooh green stuff appear even seeing green after so long is kind of shocking to the eye but it is finally here which is a hura moment that you can see in the nooks and corners of buildings haven't seen green since end of no since november because it's been snowing here since october and today i do want to speak also a little bit about how my project has been progressing because it has changed face in some way uh this is a this is the tromsa international school where kids who just move in uh take admission so that they have an opportunity to learn um norwegian before they can you know enter norwegian schools kids seem to love the school system here Uh, must be quite good and they're quite kind and gentle with students just trying to show you my office 
it's one of those windows up there below us is the historical data center um not everyone can enter these buildings which means we need some sort of a password to enter it after use this and the password to enter it hold on no points in my face I think they have all kind of stones from their archaeological findings. I still can't understand Norwegian, so don't ask me what this stands for. But it's something, as you can see. Some archaeological finding from, I'm, I don't know, from Sami areas or how? Here is another. It says shamanen. So I guess it's something to do with shamans. You get the drift. We have a lot of sun here and you know what this is, a pool table and a kitchen and stuff. And this is where my office is located. You may have seen that name before. Well, come on. Unfortunately, I don't know a photo with my parents, but that's Masum and Amish, and that's auntie and family, and that's Kivini and Zubania, my last times here. And this is my wall chart with trying to figure out what I want to do. And I will tell you a bit more about what I want to do. Um, once I have settled down. Right, so about my walk, that's what I wanted to talk about today. I think most of you know may know that um, I've been working with the Morong Express. Ta-da! Right here on my left boob. The Morong Express. The power of truth, that's what the ticker says. Mm, its banner also says, speak truth to power. Um, and I hope that is what um, I'm going to be able to look at. What is it, um, or what are the truths that uh, the Morong Express seeks to speak about? Um, why speak truth to power? What kind of power dynamics does it create? What are its historical realities from which it is derived? The newspaper itself is derived. Um, I want to look at, I mean, we often say that it's indigenous media. And um, in that sense, why do we call it indigenous media? Uh, the Morong Express publisher, Akam Longchari, often says, wonders actually whether the Morong Express is a newspaper or is it a village diary? What is a village diary? Is a village diary in that sense I'm interrogating how the village diary is also an archive, an archive of what goes on uh, within a certain space. Uh, the village does not have to be located remotely somewhere else. It doesn't have to be far away in the hills in that sense, but also is the Morung the central location of a village in itself a place where the village diary is made 
what kind of mediations dialogues go in to produce uh, news items but that is the larger newspaper i want to really focus in on the aspect of who uses religious registers because i am within religious studies after all and look at what kind of religious registers are used what are religious registers gods prayers prophecies reconciliation these are all um words loaded with some kind of religious meaning um religious meaning in the sense that it is not uh simply ordained by your something that you claim to has happened is not simply something that your neighbor claims to have happened but uh god is involved in these sort of claims so who uses the language of uh religion and how do they use it so in the newspaper for example um a prof a, a um on our public space on the newspaper's public space for instance the other day there was a short intervention from shisha hoho and they had a prophecy a few points of prophecy saying what is going to happen to the nagas in 2020 so that would be something that i would look at but also i would look at just everyday news items um is it important for then at cn for instance to say praise the lord before they begin a press release on nationwide prayers and fasting for the naga nation why do they use it why is it important to use so on and so forth uh but i want to look at the larger uses of religious registers uh which is not simply to talk about the bible or the gita or it's not exactly talking about religion but um not that one is talking about something else but how do they become also essential to uh claim religious authority over naga peoplehood um but what is naga peoplehood to understand naga peoplehood i want to ground the study in um akam longchari's book on um self determination as a resource for just peace mm-hmm. and look at how he and other uh, public intellectuals frame what is uh, the shared future and in that sense how do the morong express um journalists editors uh workers printing press machine workers how do they approach this newspaper um through this large sifting machine of the shared future how do all of them come together to weave that shared future through the pages of the morong express and that that is how i want to claim that it becomes uh, not just a newspaper not just only on a, a piece of paper that you wrap your uh, second hand clothing from new market in but also a lot more it becomes a village diary it becomes an archive it becomes also the news the paper that we used to wrap meat or uh, second hand clothing in but it is also sum of all of those processes and what it is and the the archive itself is also changing it's fluid um the morong express becomes something else in the process of making the shared future but it also keeps changing the idea of the shared future there's no one fixed idea that's what i want to see that's my theoretical hypothesis but i don't i i have to keep looking at ongoing news to be able to arrive at any conclusion that i'll draw which is like a long process and i'll be looking at the newspaper archives i'll be looking at how interactions within the newspaper take place um so on and so forth um yes i think that is more or less how my project is rolling and updated as of now i mean it was something a little bit different before i wanted to look at how the reconciliation process sort of uh unfolds in the newspaper but because there is not so much focus on the reconciliation process right now i'm just letting it go and i will arrive at it as an example of what happens to news related to something like reconciliation 
how is Nagas without borders? How does it become a concept that becomes relatable to readers? Does it become relatable to readers just because we, I mean, uh, journalists cover, write about it? Do, is it very difficult writing? Is it easy writing? Is the placement okay enough for readers to even take note of something like this? Um, anyway, I don't know what kind of example I'll arrive at. It depends on when I can go back, given that it's coronavirus times. It also means that I'm stuck here in Norway. Um, stuck in the sense I can, of course, continue to look at the website of the Morong Express and all of that. But I, I feel there is so much work that goes into publishing every issue of a newspaper like this. And unless I properly chart the journeys of people who take part in this, from buying newsprint to people driving this newspaper to these remote locations every single day, um, this 24-hour industry and what kind of repercussions it has. Sometimes um, local organizations are pissed off. Sometimes the army is pissed off. Sometimes different armies are pissed off. The Naga army is pissed off one day. The Indian army is pissed off another day. What happens in the production of this shared future uh, in these through these archives of the newspaper is that it pisses more people off than it pleases. Um, so in that sense, every day journalists and editors have to choose their words. They have to be very careful in what they project. So every press release, every program, every event is a negotiation and mediation about what to put out there to walk that tightrope every single day and in every single piece, in every single page. And to be able to understand these mediations and difficult choices that uh, every person at this newspaper makes, I have to be there, but now the future seems uncertain, so I have to figure a way out to be able to do this. And I will keep updating you about how that proceeds. For now, adios till I show you tonight's barbecue. Toodles. That is Mr. Sal showing us how strong he is. No, but you have to go there. You can't see yourself on the screen. But you gotta show us what weightlifting you can do. Psych! Oi! Psych! Whoa! That's Sal all of. How's your. How much. How, what age are you at? Five. Five. All of five and being able to lift heavy stuff. That's that nobody one. else can. <laughs> and that's um, Mr. Tristan, no, one, two, who's going to... Oh, what are you? Sorry. I'm going to decept you. Okay, he's going to decept all of us. <laughs> Oi! Hey! <laughs> People are going to cringe on this video. <laughs> <laughs> one stronger than the other. Oh. <laughs> can you post can you post it on a video? I'll post it on a video, yes. Oh no! Oh. Well, I've got one of this and maybe we can make that one for him. While we, the adults, are Asanya and Michael uh, prepping a really complicated set of the evening, a feast of barbecue, pizza, as you can see Michael making. There's, I don't know what that's called, but it's something very nice, I guess. Berries cobbler. Berries cobbler. Mixed berry cobbler. Blue and raspberry. Okay, blue and raspberry. Which we'll eventually have the cream and ice cream. <laughs> As you can see, part one of food being documented carefully and not getting the right angle. Professional photographer Asanyu at work. <laughs> And this is not a millennial, this is a post-millennial. Oh. Oh, are you posing? This is a video, sweetie. <laughs> I, don't know how, I don't know how to post a video. 
No, you don't have to. This is perfect. What you just did was perfect. Smack your mouth. Oh. Never mind. Okay, I'm going to eat. I will. I shall. This is a view you have from that place, which you can't see, but it's there. Uh huh. Yeah. So it's 11 at night, and I'm going back from Asanya, Michael, Tristan, Salvador place home. So I just wanted to show you what 11 at night really looks like in Thumsa. And I walk through these same streets full of ice. It's very difficult to walk because it's a slippery slope. So it takes quite a while to get to the bus stop. And of course it's pitch dark even at 11 a.m. during the time. I look like this because, you know, the, uh, hanging out with the kids is really, really nice. Asanya and Michael's kids are really, really cool. Uh, Tristan and Salvador. I've known them very closely only over the past one year or so. And it's been such a great joy to know them because they're real top kids. Oh, I don't have my headphones, so can you hear me? I don't know if you can hear me, but I hope you can. See how nice it is. Strange kind of light, huh? This is the area I used to live in. You can see still spiles of snow. I'm going back to town, which is where I live. And I hope to be able to show you a glimpse of that so that you've had a full complete day and glance into my life. Oh, oh shit, my bus, fuck. Midnight sun. This is what it looks like. So, one of the things I really enjoy is of course walking back here whether it's midnight sun as it is right now or no sun at all as it is in the winter the polar nights it's really just as nice to walk except the slippery parts which i don't enjoy at all i don't enjoy walking on ice at all i do enjoy the fresh air very very much uh, because it doesn't have dust is almost entirely missing and I, as I said in the morning 
they have been cleaning the streets so even at this point of time in the summer it was beginning to get dusty because of the mud and the stones that had gathered over the winter because they had to try to stop the slipperiness so it's very very nice but nice about there's a lot of space it is very less people no police because police is not and policing is not really needed people kind of know the law abide by the law probably a sleep by this time also because party places are shut otherwise city sees quite a lot of partying at this time during the rest of the year well this is the road i take generally to walk back home there are some nice uh, homes around here i'm not sure you know everything they all look like boxes but i'm beginning to see the interesting parts oh and seagulls dangerous creatures of the sea really noisy they attack all the garbage bins think of crows in india and you'll be able to imagine what seagulls are like here in punjab trees like this see life back again so i'm going to refocus on the scenario scenario scene really so that you see the scenes that i get to see every day tada at least for some time if i get back to everything else so yeah sort of sunlight i mean it's like morning except that it's coming from the other side you can imagine going down these hills in the winter it's all slippery and just a nightmare basically so that's where sunrise now sort of the sun is around here and it'll rise around here and then go up around 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 does the land of the midnight sun the midnight sun is currently shining may 21st now going into may 22nd is the first day that comes on and it stays if you can see the mountains there lit up by the midnight sun looks like i don't know painting if there are paintings like those i'm sure there are you can see the arctic cathedral you can see the one and only flyover i hope you can see that it's a pretty mountainous city goes up and down This is the road I take to the bus that I generally take. Um, this big, bad, white building, you can see it came up pretty much over the past couple of months. Um, pretty quick with construction and the construction industry sort of picked up pretty quickly during coronavirus as well. There were a few construction workers at all times there. But this really is the major view that I'm aiming for for you all to see. You get a sense. You can see we are surrounded by big mountains. And I live in this area. really has to have the snow cleared a lot of uh, big construction going on as you can tell from the rain right there it's 
nice to live. Now that the cold is not so chilly and you go down to gloves, the jackets and five layers. But the sun shining at half past eleven at night. So it's certainly strange. But it's not as bad as <laughs> the polar nights, which is night all the time. already somewhere in the city. why they would build such a big building in a place with such long shadows oh, I'm walking in the middle of the road all of this was filled 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 with snow and ice what a pleasure to be able to walk on them without the terror of it all oh well this is where I live this is my window my bedroom. This is my building. I've reached home. So that ends the day of the midnight sun. This long, long video. If you have stayed on.